Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is lovely to see you here this morning. Thank you for joining with us today. Uh, a couple of notices as we begin. If you've had the uh, church notices emailed to you, um, if not, there are some on the table over there. It's a bumper edition for half term, uh, so do take a note of lots of things that are in there. But a couple of things I'd particularly like to draw to your attention. Uh, it's prayer meetings. So there's a prayer meeting tomorrow morning at half past ten at Bernard and Allison's house. You'd be very welcome to go down to theirs. Uh, half past ten tomorrow. We've also got a prayer meeting here on Wednesday at half past seven in the evening. First one's half past ten in the morning, I guess, isn't it? Yes, it's half past ten in the morning. Uh, half past seven in the evening here on Wednesday night. We've also got our church meeting on Saturday 28th here in this place at half past nine. And Miles is going to come and say a little bit about that. Thank you. Hello, this is just an encouragement for you to come along if you possibly can on Saturday. Uh, and for those who are watching on video, even though you're not here, you can come along uh, on Saturday. Um, a, a little Burry's told me that I've probably daunt, put, made people really daunted by looking at Miles's sort of um, uh, day job type structure, analytical structure of the questions and everything. Don't be daunted, just because mm -hmm. I think that way. We're going to be doing something on Saturday morning that allows people who think in different ways, communicate in different ways, those who like to talk when there's a big crowd, those who like to talk or think individually, we'll be looking to do as much as we can to bring everybody in, because the main idea is just to listen to each other. But if we don't have a structure, then there's a real risk that we'll go round and round in circles forever and get nowhere. So that's the reason for the little bit of structure. Thank you for those who have contributed ahead of time. Some people have just dotted, that, jotted down a few words under some of the headings. Others have gone into great detail, which is great. Um, so feel free to contribute ahead of time. It'll help us, uh, Brian, myself, maybe some others to help structure Saturday. Don't be daunted. It's all about us revealing that lovely little strap line, making Jesus know and revealing Jesus and working out as an organization um, what our goal is, where we are now, options for the future to celebrate together um, now what is only the first bite we're talking about on a, a wednesday in november a wednesday evening in november and a saturday morning in december into your diaries within the next week so that we know that we've got a few bites to get there and to get to a, as common an understanding as possible okay talk to me afterwards um, and see if uh, i can encourage you to come along Fabulous. Thank you very much, Miles. And one further notice is that you'll see it's, uh, we're launching our shoebox appeal this Sunday, Operation Christmas Child. We'll hear more about that later on in our service, but do take note, there's lots of shoeboxes over there at the side of the room. Well, it is good to be here together this morning, and we're going to begin by listening to God's Word before we sing together. Uh, Lamentations, uh, chapter 3, verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Well, we come together this morning to give praise and honour and glory to God. We're going to do that as we uh, pray, as we read God's word, as we sing together. And we're going to begin this morning by singing that great hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, that reminds us of the greatness and the glory and the majesty of our God into whose presence we come this morning. So let's stand and sing together the music on the screen as we give glory to God, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
take a seat. Isn't it wonderful to sing those truths this morning, to sing and declare that God is that almighty, immortal, invisible God whom we come to praise together today? Well, boys and girls, um, I've got a little, uh, you need to help me this morning. I know it's half term, but you're still going to need to keep your brains in gear. So I've got some math questions for you this morning to help your brains in gear. Uh, so here's my first math question for you this morning. I wonder if you can help me. What is 62 plus 2? Yes, John. It's 64. Let's have a look. Yes, it is 64. Well done. Okay. Let's get a bit trickier with the math questions. What is 70 minus 6? Go on. You can have another go. Do you know? <coughs> Someone's going to have to. Yes. 64. Let's have a look. It's 64 as well. Okay. Let's have a look at the next screen. Simon Cowell. How old do you think Simon Cowell is? <laughs> I mean, he's had a lot of work done to his face, so, you know, it's hard to tell, isn't it? But, you know, how old do we think Simon Cowell is? 80. 80. <laughs> Someone needs to follow along with what's happening. What do we think? Well, someone said 64. How old is he? He's 64. <laughs> Hold on a moment. Yeah, how did that happen? Mm. Uh, next question. It's 64 sleeps until what? <laughs> If, if you're not counting now, let's have a look at the next slide. It's 64 days until Christmas. Of course it is. 64 days until Christmas. And so today, we're launching our Operation Christmas Child shoebox appeal, where we get some shoeboxes and we pack them for boys and girls of all sorts of ages, uh, the specific ages are there, and we fill them with some lovely things to send off to them to get in time for Christmas, so that hopefully before 64 days' time, they'll have a lovely box of shoeboxes to unpack, and, and maybe it'll be the only things they get for Christmas this year. Well, we're going to watch a DVD uh, by um, Samaritan's Purse that tell us a bit more about it before we think about these shoeboxes. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, one. When that shoebox is opened, they are overjoyed. You can see them shouting, jumping. They are so happy. You can hear the laughter, you can hear the cheer, the excitement, it goes and goes and goes. Right now we're at Indian Crane and today we've given out the 200 million shoebox to a little girl here. So it's a lot of fun. It's a privilege for us to be able to come and to help the people as much as we can. Every box is important, every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. There's so much joy that one gift box can give. They really experience the love of Jesus. And Operation Christmas Show, we celebrate something as simple as the shoebox because God uses it to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We all are here for the same reason, because we love God and because we want the children from far and wide to also find Jesus and love Jesus like we do. We never dreamed we'd have an army of men and women who would come to make this program happen. This is what it's all about. Telling love and compassion. These shoe boxes go to 120 different countries where pastors and missionaries are going to use them to bring the gospel to kids. So you may think it's just a simple gift at Christmas, but it's the gift of the gospel, the story of Jesus Christ. When that shoebox leaves that distribution centre and it goes around the world, that's not just one person, that's the body of Christ joined together, delivering the good news of the gospel. They go by plane, they go by ship, they go by riverboat, they go by camels, they go by motorbikes, and these boxes go to some of the most remote areas of the world, and every box counts. After receiving shoe boxes, children are invited to participate in the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program. These children have just completed 12 lessons in the Greatest Journey. I believe that discipleship is the key and they are now followers of Christ. They will tell their friends about Jesus. My name is Gladys and I'm 9 years old. My friend Kemi told me I needed to go with her to church. I wanted to teach her about the Word of God. 
And when she came to my church, she received a gift box. For a long time, I asked my mom for a blanket. When I opened my shoe box, I found a blanket in it. When I came home, I showed it to my mom, and she said it was great. I told her about Jesus. Now me, my mom, my grandma, and Kenny go to church together. I am certain of one thing. God is my savior. Every box counts. Every box touches a child. It's like a snowflake. There's not one shoebox that's the same. And we're reaching millions of children with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you take the heart of the child, you will reach the heart of the parents, you will reach the heart of the family, and then you will touch the community. We are seeing churches being planted, and more and more churches are being built. We will do whatever it takes to reach the ends of the earth with the gospel. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. It is incredible how these gifts touch the lives of these children. The joy, the smiles, it changes lives. Every year we see tens of thousands of children disciple, and we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes, thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. So if you want to find out more about this, uh, the mission of Operation Christmas Child is to provide uh, God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world. And if you want to find out more about the shoeboxes, uh, there's information leaflets, whether you want to do one for a boy or for a girl and the different age ranges, they're all on the table over there. You can pack a physical box like this one, or you can do one online as well, as well or um, if, just online if you wanted to do. But there's one verse in the Bible that I want to share with you this morning, and it's from Matthew 25, verse 40. The words of Jesus that said, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So it's a little thing to do, but a, a big impact we're trying to make in sharing the love of God around the world. So let's pray for these shoeboxes and for these children. Father God, we thank you for your great love for us that is shown in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that Jesus came into the world for sinners like us. And Father, thank you that we can make Jesus known. We can share the love of Jesus, not just with our friends and our families and our neighbours here in Shambrook and the surrounding villages, but also further afield around the world. And Lord, we pray that as we pack our shoeboxes, whether they're physical ones or whether they're online, we pray that as they're sent out, that there'll be opportunities for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to be shared with boys and girls around the world. And we pray, Father God, that as these gifts are received at Christmas time, as we receive gifts at Christmas time, we'll think of the greatest gift, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we pray, Father, may you bless these shoeboxes as they go, even the very ones we've got here that'll be opened by children unknown to us but known by you. We pray, Father, for the opportunity there that they might hear of your wonderful love for them. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a... Ch oh, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yes, you've only got three weeks if you want to pack a physical box. So, short period of time, three weeks. Sunday, the 12th of November, is the deadline to get these back uh, to Maggie. And quite likely, um, the boxes from the UK primarily go to the um, Eastern European countries. So, that gives you a sort of guide that it was better to have something warm rather than shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to see. Thank you. Well, we're going to sing a children's song now. Uh, so what I'm going to suggest is for the first verse, we stay seated. Uh, so you can pick up the tune. You'll have heard it before. Uh, we've sung it before online. Uh, it's called Jesus Strong and Kind, but it sings great truth. Let them sing the first verse to us, and then after that, we'll stand together and carry on and sing verses two and three. But it reminds us about how we can come to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, how, however young we are, or however old we are. So let's listen to the first verse and then we'll join in with Jesus, strong and kind.
truth there again to sing for the lord is good and faithful he will keep us day and night we can always run to jesus jesus strong and kind well we're going to come to the lord in prayer now and Mars is going to come and leave us thank you let's pray father god almighty immortal and invisible we come to praise you you are the ancient of days holding the whole of human history in your gaze. You and you alone are truly wise, incomprehensible, except in your mercy, wisdom and grace, you called on your eternal son to be contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man, humbled even to death on a cross, that we might know Jesus as Lord, as Saviour, as brother, as friend. We thank you that surrounded by this failed world of sin that knows you not, we can still see glimpses of your eternal perfect garden that you created long ago. You set eternity in the human heart. You set eternity in our heart. And so our hearts yearn for that promised day when we will finally be whole. For now, Lord God, have your Holy Spirit work in our hearts to mold, to shape, to equip, and to encourage us to live out in word and deed on our front lines, wherever we are, a life changed by you. And pour out your Holy Spirit in our communities in Sharnbrook and the surrounding villages, wherever we live and witness, that lives might be turned to you and that your kingdom might come here on earth as it is today in heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus, therefore, we can come in confidence to you, Lord God, this morning with our prayers of supplication for those in our fellowship, our community, our nation, 
and your world. We entrust to your care those who are ill or in pain, that they may know the truth of your everlasting arms holding them safe. We pray for all the recently bereaved, that they may know your peace. We pray for those who can't be with us this morning for whatever reason. Pray for folk like Ruth Register, no doubt, worshipping with us at this time. We pray for our young folk at home and at college. We thank you in our absence for all the work that Sam does with us and for us and through us. We pray that she will have a time of rest and recuperation, quiet family time, that she might become come back refreshed to continue. We pray for JCs at the primary school, for the believers who attend as teachers or students here in the academy. We pray especially here that you might raise up a Christian union that witnesses to your word in this place of education. And especially for this initiative that we're praying into and giving for this, or this uh, band called LZ7 to come and to spread your gospel through word and modern music. We thank you for Uncover that brings some of our young folk together. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts and might be um, called to just nurture the children that come into this building with us in the Sunday school and cause such great delight for us to see young lives listening to you. Bless them as they gather together up the stairs this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for our new friends from Colombia that bring a taste of your global family into this little corner of Bedfordshire. A taste of the family that will gather together in eternity around your throne. When every tongue and nation worships you for eternity. We pray for those who are, are away on mission and to witness for you this morning. We thank you for Helen who's serving with Restoration Revival Fellowship today. We thank you for Ruth McBain in Malawi and we pray that you will help her as she prepares to travel home tomorrow. We raise up John and Billy to you this morning. We give you thanks that you were there for John's mum as she received such quick care. And we ask your blessing on John and Billy as they look to a new season in Reading. We give, we give real thanks for the commitment of John to your word. Move him through your spirit this morning that we might hear your voice. God of light and salvation, our refuge and our strength, we pray for the people of Israel and Palestine amid the escalating violence there. We pray for those injured by the rocket from Gaza, the rockets from Gaza into southern Israel and for the families of those killed. May your rod and staff comfort them. We pray for your protection on those who've been taken hostage by Hamas. As they walk through this dark valley, may they fear no evil. We pray for the civilians of Gaza. May they know that their help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Allow our brothers and sisters in all these lands where your son walked, Allow them to witness to the light that is you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Miles, for leading us in our prayers this morning. Well, we're going to sing again. Uh, we're going to sing because Christ is risen from the dead and we serve a risen Saviour. We're going to sing, See what a morning, gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. And as we sing this, Boys and girls are going to head out with Rosie and you'll head on upstairs and we'll see you later on. So let's stand and sing together. See you. What a morning.
seat. And will you open up your Bibles? The team's going to come and bring us the Bible reading. Thank you. So the reading is from Philippians. It's on page 1180 in the church Bibles. I read from verse 19. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, but not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Thanks be to God for this reading. Thank you so much, Tina. Please do keep your Bibles open there at Philippians chapter 2 as we come to God's Word together. And as we do so, let us pray together. Father, we thank you for your Word. We thank you that it is a light unto our feet and a lamp for our path. And we pray this morning that you would, by the power of your Spirit, that you would illuminate your truth into our lives. Warm our hearts. Help us to see the glory of of the risen Lord Jesus, we pray. For we ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, please do have Philippians chapter 2 open in front of you. Uh, last week and this week, we've been looking at two good examples to follow. Two good examples of what it means to shine like stars in the universe as Christians. Two good examples of what it practically means to have the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, last week we looked at Timothy, uh, and our reading encompassed a bit of Timothy as well. We considered Timothy who had a, a life devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ, a humble servant of the gospel, who had a genuine care for his fellow Christians. And this week we're going to be looking at verses 25 through to verse 30 and Epaphroditus. And I hope you notice the, the contrast between these two men. Unlike Timothy, Epaphroditus is only mentioned here in Philippians. Timothy, of course, had been with Paul since that early missionary journey in Acts 16. Timothy had two letters written specifically to him. Timothy is the, the gold star poster boy, if you like, of this New Testament. Uh, Epaphroditus, well, he's just an ordinary Christian. He gets two mentions in this letter here and in chapter 4, verse 18. He didn't have that long-standing shared relationship with Paul. He didn't have that special bond that Paul and Timothy had. You know, they talked about it in terms of being a father and a son in the faith. No, this is a new friendship, but a new friendship that very quickly became a close one. Epaphroditus was an ordinary Christian, probably with an ordinary job, and in fact we know very little about him. We're not told that he preached or had great gifts, or we're told that he was sent as a messenger with a gift to go and see Paul. And as he does that, we see that he shines brightly like a star in the universe. 
And with this little pen portrait of Epaphroditus, I think the key verse really is verse 29, uh, Philippians 2 verse 29, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him. Now we honour, don't we, our heroes of the faith. Perhaps you've got a favourite preacher that you listen to online and you go, yes, I, I honour this person because they, they speak so well. Or maybe you've got a favourite author, uh, dead or alive, from the past or from current day, and you go, ah, oh, yes, I, and I honour this person because they're a, a great hero of the faith. Maybe you've got a spiritual father or mother still living and, and there's a, someone who, who you look up to and honour in that way. It's interesting how we honour different people, don't we? We, we honour sporting heroes as they raise their trophies aloft and we, we surround them with great applause. Well, perhaps South African sporting heroes. I mean, English ones try hard, but we get a second best both in the cricket and rugby yesterday. But there we go. We still honour them and go, you've done well. We honour our film heroes by giving them Oscars and awards and lots of applause. We honour those who've done great achievements with Nobel Prizes. We honour others for their bravery and what they've done in serving. As I sat in my mum's study this week, on the wall is the certificate given to my grandfather for an OBE, an officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire. The beginning of it reads like this. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, and Sovereign of the most excellent order of the British Empire, to our trusty and well-beloved William Heron Esquire. Uh, William, that is William the Senior, um, was honoured by the Queen for his civil service. You see, we honour and respect people by perhaps giving them awards to say, well done. We honour and respect those who've achieved great things. Well, what we're going to see this morning is an ordinary Christian. Epaphroditus, who's a good example to follow, a brother, a co-worker, a soldier, someone who is worthy of that same kind of honour. So let's look together at him. Verse 25. I think it necessary to send back to you, Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. Now, Epaphroditus' name means lovely or charming, which kind of tells you a little bit about him already, doesn't it? He's the kind of guy you'd want to have along. But Paul gives him five other names, five other titles here in verse 25. He calls him brother and co-worker, a fellow soldier, a messenger, <coughs> and, and the little bit at the end I've called it a minister, <coughs> one whom you sent to take care of my needs. Just, just think about those five aspects of him for a moment. He is a brother. Do, do you see the warm affection with which Paul calls this man brother? The, the natural barriers of race and of culture have been set aside to affirm that both he and Paul are brothers in Christ. They're of the same family. They are children of God. And that just follows in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus, isn't it? Uh, when asked about his, his mother and brothers, he said, well, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. He looked at those seated in a circle round him and said, here are my mother, here are my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my mother and brother and sister. You see, whatever our, our differences, whatever our backgrounds, whatever our upbringing, whatever our church backgrounds, whatever our own individual preferences, at the foot of the cross, you and I stand on level ground as brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to remember that, don't we? We need to take hold of that. Paul does with Epaphroditus. There's no, I'm the Apostle Paul and you're just Epaphroditus. No, we are, we're brothers in Christ. We're one in Christ Jesus. He calls him brother. Uh, the second phrase he uses of him is co-worker. Do you notice that there's no them and us? You see, we're used to that in life, aren't we? There, there are the, there's the management and the workforce, you know. There's those who think about it and those who do it, you know. There's that split of, you know, them and us. And, and in whatever category of life you fit that into, there's always a them and us, isn't there? There's none of that with Paul. Again, it's not the, I'm the super apostle and you're the lowly worker. No, we are co-workers. 
They labour together. They serve together for the cause of the gospel. That just echoes, doesn't it, the beginning of Philippians? When he prayed for them, I thank my God every time I remember you. Chapter 1, verse 4. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He calls him a co-worker. But it's also reflected that same equality in the third title. He's a brother, he's a, a fellow worker, but he's also a fellow soldier. Paul and Epaphroditus recognised they were in a battle, a spiritual battle, and that there's that great camaraderie between these fellow soldiers. Now, sadly, we've, we've seen too much of soldiers in these last few days, haven't we, in our news? But, but you see the soldiers, when they gather there together, they work as one. I saw on the news recently two soldiers, uh, and they were obviously had someone in front of them, but the other soldiers around them, well, they turned their backs to, to get their backs, quite literally, to protect them, to be there together. They're, they're soldiers who are one, who endure and loyally work together. And, and Paul says, look, I acknowledge Epaphroditus as not only a co-worker, but also a fellow soldier in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he calls him brother, he calls him fellow worker, he calls him fellow soldier. The fourth title is that of messenger. Paul's been sent to Rome by the Philippian church with a gift. He is in, he is in essence, he's a messenger boy. He's a gopher. He's, a, he's an Amazon delivery driver of the day, if you like. You know, and, and do, do you know the name of the Amazon delivery driver who comes and goes? No, because you're, you're interested in the, the parcel that they're delivering or what they've dropped off at the door. Listen to what one commentator uh, wrote about Epaphroditus. He, he wrote of him this. Epaphroditus was doing a relatively mundane-looking job for the sake of the gospel. But what he did was vital for the advance of the gospel. Paul needed money, and Epaphroditus volunteered to be the dispatch rider. This is the equivalent of putting out the chairs at a meeting, offering hospitality to a visiting speaker, running the church accounts, making the coffee, or doing the publicity. He's the, he's the dispatch rider. And you see, of course, they wanted to give Paul some money. There wasn't a bank transfer. There wasn't an easy way of doing it. Someone's literally got to go with the money to go see him. Paul's in prison. He's only going to be supported by what friends and family bring him. So it's essential that Epaphroditus goes. But he's just a courier. He's just a messenger boy. But his mundane job is vital. Because without it, Paul couldn't continue to proclaim the gospel. Paul couldn't continue to do the work that he's been called to do. I think that aspect's really pertinent for us, isn't it? There's jobs that need to be done. Some of them are mundane. And Epaphroditus was willing to do the messenger boy job. So he's a brother, he's a co-worker, he's a fellow soldier, he's a messenger. But he's also a minister. Because we're told that they sent him to take care of Paul's needs. Here's someone who's a warm-hearted servant, faithfully taking care of the needs of Paul. He's willing to go. He's willing to go on behalf of the church and say, I will do this job. He served the church. He risked his life. He placed his gifts at the disposal of the church and said, I'll go. It's a difficult job, but I'm willing to do it. And of course, the church trusted him to go and do that work. I, I think it's quite a challenge, isn't it? Just so you look at that little pen portrait of him, Brother, co-worker, fellow soldier, messenger, minister. Are we willing to be servant, servant-hearted like Epaphroditus in serving the Lord? He's a brother in Christ. The next thing we see of him, that he's, he's a recipient of God's mercy as he does this work. Verse 26 to 28, for he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow on sorrow. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So Epaphroditus is doing this job on behalf of the church in Philippi. He's gone to see Paul in Rome, and he falls ill. He falls ill, and he almost dies, but he's sustained by the mercy of God. Listen to his reaction again in verse 26. He longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. So he's distressed. 
It's kind of strange, isn't it? Because the Philippians are distressed about him, but he's distressed that they're distressed. It's the same word used of the Lord's deep trouble of spirit in Gethsemane. You know, in Gethsemane, it's recorded that Jesus takes Peter and James and John with him and he begins to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Well, Epaphroditus is anxious because they're anxious about him. Do you, see his, do you see his sensitivity towards others? His emotional intelligence, we might call it. He is very much aware that his illness and sickness is causing them distress. And that's the last thing he wants to do. What he's mindful of in his sickness, nearly to the point of death, is I don't want to cause others any trouble. It's really helpful, isn't it, to be thinking about how others might feel in response to us in response to our, ourselves and our words and our circumstances and our lives, going, how do others feel about me and what's happening in my life? He's sensitive towards others. He longs for all of them and was distressed because they heard he was ill. And indeed, he was very ill. Look at verse 27. He was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him. God has mercy on Epaphroditus, but look, he also has mercy on Paul to spare Paul sorrow upon sorrow. So Paul says, look, I'm going to send him back to you so that your anxiety may be relieved, that my anxiety may be relieved, that we might be thankful to God for his mercy. Paul says, Epaphroditus has received mercy. He's a recipient of mercy. He's almost died, but God's been, God's been merciful to him. And it's been merciful to me because that's spared me that sorrow upon sorrow. I, I think in this he's teaching us, isn't he, to, to be thankful for God's mercy, when you see the mercy of God, you can say, thank you, God. You are a merciful and good God because I see it really clearly. I know that you're always like that, but now I particularly see this in this circumstance. I'm thankful this week for the mercy of God in sparing my mum's life. If her friends hadn't been there, if the ambulance hadn't come quickly, if she hadn't gone straight into the critical care unit and been treated within the hour, she might not be here. Now, like us, like all of us, her days are numbered. She won't be called home a day too early or a day too late. But for today, I'm thankful for the mercy of God. But you know what? There, there will be a day when sorrow comes. There, there will be a day. And on that day, God has not abandoned his faithfulness. He's not abandoned his good promises. He's still faithful, but I'll be all the more thankful for the days of his mercy. I was reading the hymn, I will sing the wondrous story that says, days of darkness still may meet me, sorrow's path I oft may tread, but his presence still is with me, by his guiding hand I'm led. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, how he left the realms of glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. You see, Epaphroditus almost died, but it was a cause for God to show mercy and for Paul and Epaphroditus to say, thank you, God, for your mercy. I see it so clearly today in his life. You and I need to be people who not only receive the mercy of God, but say, thank you, God. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So Epaphroditus, he's a brother in Christ. He is a, a recipient of God's mercy. And so he's to be honoured in the Lord. That's the last two verses. And I think the, the main part of this passage. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him. Because he almost died for the work of Christ. Risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Paul wants these Philippian Christians to receive Epaphroditus with joy. With joy and appreciation, not only for who he is, but also for what he's done, for his faithful ministry with gratitude to God. They're to esteem him because of his spirit of, of laying aside his own comforts for the cause of Christ. You do have to ask, though, why is he telling them to do this? Because surely they, they're a really lovely church because they sent Epaphroditus with money to Paul and to look after him. And they've been, they've been sad to hear that he's ill and now he's coming back. It's like, well, why have you got to tell them to, to, to honour this man? Won't they do it? 
Will they forget? Will he just turn up with a letter from Paul and they'll go, oh great, a letter from Paul? Uh, maybe they will. Just think about it for a moment. If, if you couldn't do like a bank transfer and we wanted to go and give some money to someone like Garney and so one of us has to go and you've got to go over land and sea and eventually you get there and, and you spend a bit of time there and then eventually by land and sea and foot you eventually get back and you walk in through the door with a letter from him. What are you going to say? You're going to say, how's Garney? Uh, rather than, how are you and how was the journey? And, oh yeah, you were nearly ill. You know, we can very over, quickly overlook the messenger, the, the Amazon delivery driver who turns up. It's like, thank you very much. Not that they want to have a long conversation about how their day is because the engine's still running and they've got to go to the next person, but the, the messenger gets overlooked potentially. Paul's saying to them, look, don't take faithful servants of God for granted. He, he's not a poster boy Timothy. He's not an apostle Paul. He's an ordinary Epaphroditus. But don't take faithful servants of God for granted. Honour. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honour men like him. Now what, what does that mean? Does he, does he expect a ticker tape parade as he walks in through the door? Does he expect a medal ceremony with a fanfare of trumpets? Lots of speeches, a round of applause? Well, I don't think Paul means for that, or Epaphroditus really wants that either. No, it's a joy in the Lord. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy. In other words, give honour and thanks to God. Thank you, God, for the gifts you've given this man. Thank you for his faithful, willing service. But more than that, Lord, may I learn from this man? May I learn to be more like the Lord Jesus because he's got the attitude of Jesus and he's faithfully living it out might I stick closely with him and learn from him and become more like him as I see what it's like to have the attitude of Jesus in my daily life. So honour such people, respect the Epaphroditus of this world because, verse 29 and verse 30, he almost died for the work of Christ. Uh, that's the expression there in verse 30, he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. So in other words, he took a calculated risk he nearly died because they wanted to help Paul, and he's literally said, I am willing to lay down my life. You see, we can't quite get that, can we? Because we think of, it's just going to be an easy journey. No, he's willing to literally say, I will lay down my life for this cause. And it's not the most glamorous of things, because I'm just the delivery boy, but I'm willing to do it. Because I'm willing to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ and help Paul to continue to do that. You see, people have risked their lives so that we can make Jesus known, so that we can meet freely this morning. People have laid down their lives for that in this place. So, so years ago, I used to serve in, in Beckles Baptist Church, and it's a great big building, and at the front, there's a stone tablet, and it records the, the martyrs who were, were killed for their faith in Jesus right there on that spot in Beckles where the church building is. Three men, Thomas Spicer, John Denny, and Edmund Poole, they were burned for their faith in Jesus on the 21st of May, 1556. The thing is, that seems so long ago, and it's in Suffolk, so it feels miles away, but it's three men who laid down their lives for the faith that you and I hold to. They were, so Tom and John and Edmund, they were arrested for refusing to conform to the re-established Catholic Church, and after a trial for heresy, they were burned at the stake. And on the placard on the church building reads these words. It's from Fox's Book of Martyrs. Uh, when they rose from prayer, they all went joyfully to the stake. And being bound thereto, and the fire burning about them, they praised God in such an audible voice that it was wonderful to all those which stood by and heard them. And then the plaque quotes Revelation 6 verse 11. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. Paul writes of Epaphroditus, honour him in the Lord, because he risked his life for the help that you could not give me. Respect him, honour him, value him. Copy him, spend time with him, pray with him, ask him to teach you how to be more and more like Jesus. Here's Epaphroditus, a brother in Christ, a recipient of God's mercy, who's to be honoured in the Lord. 
We're to respect the faithful, ordinary servants, to think highly of them because they point us to the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ, to, to the one that we want to be more like day by day. They show us the practical reality of what it means to shine like a star in the universe. They show us what it is to have the attitude of the Lord Jesus. They model for us Jesus. And you and I want to be more and more like Jesus day by day, don't we? So that when we see him face to face, it won't be unrecognisable, but we'll be made more and more like him by the power of the Spirit in us. Let us honour in the Lord the Epaphrodites of this world. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for those who so faithfully serve. Thank you for those who do ordinary, mundane jobs. Thank you for those who do things in an unrecognised way. Lord, it's an honour to serve alongside brothers and sisters in Christ for the cause of the gospel. It's an honour to make Jesus known together as a church. And we pray, Father God, that we would indeed do that, that we would be brothers and sisters, fellow workers, fellow soldiers for the cause of the gospel here in this place. Lord, may our lives and our words and our actions bring glory and honour to your name. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, last Sunday we closed our service with the song, Yet Not I, but through Christ in me. And we're going to do the same uh, today because it is reminding us that it's not all about me and myself and my attitude, but it's about the Lord at work in and through me. And so let's prayerfully stand and sing together, What Gift of Grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? Gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold.
at the end of our service. Please don't forget the shoe boxes that are all open on the side there and uh, the leaflets that are there. Please can speak with Steve and Maggie if you want to know more about that. And also to say that there are lots of things do needing to be done in church life and if you've looked at those lists that have been handed out previously and there's some things you want to do, please do come and speak with myself or Miles or Brian. We'd love to chat with you further about this. Well, before we have tea and coffee, listen to these words from Revelation 1 as we close in prayer. Now to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen.